Hi, everyone. A very warm welcome to you to this webinar on ERMI funding opportunities from the India Alliance. Um, ERMI was set up to strengthen research ecosystems in India, and we're very happy to be launching the third call for funding applications uh, through the ERMI initiative. Next slide, please. So before we begin, a few housekeeping uh, tips. This webinar is being recorded, so in case you're not able to catch the whole uh, session or if you have colleagues who would like to listen in, you can always find a recording of today's webinar on the India Alliance YouTube channel. You can leave questions anytime during the webinar in the questions box, and we will try and do our best to answer those questions towards the end of the session. In case the webinar ends abruptly due to any technical glitch, please just join back using the same registration link. Next slide, please. So just a quick reminder that uh, uh, the strategic priorities for ERMI or the India Research Management Initiative, where we seek to build research management capacity in India through four strategic priorities. The first priority is supporting research centers in India in strengthening their research management services available to their researchers. The second priority is supporting training, career development, and networking opportunities for research managers and administrators in India. The third priority is building national and international partnerships for knowledge and resource exchange. And the fourth priority for ERMI is creating a community of practice for research management in India. Next slide, please. So today we're going to talk to you about the three major funding opportunities through the ERMI initiatives. So the way these initiatives are conceptualized, there are the research management fellowships, which are intended for institutions that wish to launch their research offices. There are the research management grants, which are intended for institutions that want to boost their existing research support services. And there are the research management travel grants, these are intended for research managers in India, uh, and they can use these grants to attend international conferences, workshops, training courses in the area of research management uh, using the funds available from the grant. Next slide, please. So all details of these ERMI funding opportunities are available off the ERMI website. You can find this on the India Alliance website. So please do take a look at the ERMI website. On that note, I hand over to my colleague, Ramya, to talk us through the research management fellowships. Ramya, over to you. Thank you, Savita. Uh, yeah, I'm Ramya Kandan, a grants advisor at India Alliance. So I will be taking you through the provisions and the mandate of the RM fellowships. So the research management fellowship is a combined mentored and institutional strengthening fellowship program, which is for a duration of three years. So the main purpose of this fellowship is to support the creation of a research management office at an institution which is in its early stage of developing an, a research management office. So this is enabled by a designated individual or a nominee who is recruited for this fellowship. And it also has a unique mentoring component where the RM fellows are mentored in the research office processes over a period of six months. Next, please. So the fellowship has an attractive salary package of six lakhs rupees funding per annum towards the salary support of the research management fellow. And in addition to that, the research management fellow can also budget up to one lakh rupees as a training budget for, for the entire duration of three years. This training can be and not limited to online courses or workshops or research management internships or visit. And as mentioned earlier, this has an attractive initiative of a mentoring component where the research management fellows are mentored in research office processes for a period of six months. And also the awarded research management fellows are included in the growing IRMI community and in the networking and building capacity. Next, please. Yeah, majorly on the application, we have specific roles. Uh, one such would be the sponsor who is primarily be a senior researcher or a faculty at an institution who will provide us the institutional undertaking and also sign us for the India Alliance award conditions. For example, could be the uh, head of the institute, director of an institute, or uh, also and um, dean of the research faculty. 
a letter of support addressing the long term stability of the office is mandatory from the sponsor and then we have the fellowship supervisor so here it could be a senior researcher or a mentor at the host institution taking responsibility to mentor the research management fellow so they would also be required to give a letter of support highlighting the mentoring plan uh, for the research management fellow and the research manage uh, the fellowship supervisor's tenure at the host institution must extend beyond the duration of the proposed fellowship and then we have the research management fellow or the nominee who is to be nominated by the host institution uh, the individual seeking careers in grant management through all stages say for example uh, pre award post award or in a product uh, research development can be nominated and most importantly the nominee must be completely or relatively a new entrant into the research support services at the employing institution and if the fellowship is awarded the nominee will be regarded as a research management fellow and they will be provided with the mentorship and they can also provide other roles such as mentors or collaborators from partnering institutions who would also taking up any mentoring roles for the research management fellow next please yeah so in terms of institutional contributions where the host institutes is very important applying for the research management fellowship as noted uh, india alliance can fund only for not for profit institution and if the institutions fall within the not for profit status then they are eligible to apply and we also look for the mandate of india alliance where the research is to support biomedical research that is relevant to human and animal welfare and eligible host institutions that could apply for the research management fellowships are only at the early stages of developing a research management office are eligible and the host institute is expected to meet a certain requirements they are supposed to um, check in for the office expenses they are supposed to provide if there is any shortfall in the salary of the research management fellow to cover it up and uh, also they should be able to enable integration of the research management services with the other administrative services of the institute and uh, most importantly they are supposed to set up an institutional steering committee which would comprise members of the institute who would be uh, mentoring and monitoring the uh, progress of the research management fellow next slide please yeah so now going on into the application process and what do we look for and what is our selection criteria so the selection of the awardees will primarily be based on the quality of the institutional statement of interest which would uh, primarily cover uh, how effectively will the research office in further the research and innovation at the host institution the vision of the research office uh, the research management plan and the implementation and plans for the sustainability so let us go into the details of what each of us each of this would mean for us next please yeah so the first we would look for the background information of the host institute describing majorly of the status of research at the institution so a brief note on the research carried at the institution and its overall capacity is what is expected next we would look at the status of the research management at the institution for example projects or grants funded and the industrial or the international collaborations which the institutions currently have and importantly as ia stated we do look for the mandate to fund institutions which fall within its remit of funding and uh, so we also require an institutional registration from the participating institutions this form is available on our website and uh, then we look for the vision of the research office the long term plans uh, the expected uh, the proposed impact of the research office that is being proposed by the host institution next please yeah uh, furthering the research at the host institution we will be looking at the implementation plan of the research office so here we will look at the research management plan that is proposed in the application the steps outlined towards the implementation of the plans and uh, the profile of the nominee and their fit to the institution whether they are complementary to each other the time course of the activities uh, milestones and uh, the uh, time chart being that is provided and we will also look for the budget details whether budget is being uh, appropriately mentioned and the team composition of the steering committee the internal institutional committee comprising of members from the institute next please 
uh, finally, we look for the sustainability plans outlined. Uh, they, uh, what are the sustainability plans that are outlined by the research office, which is beyond the grant period? The support and sustainability of the research management fellow in terms of their salary structure or whether there is an organizational restructure to include their role. And also on higher level, we look for resources that are available at the institute for the smooth functioning of the research office activities. And we also see if there are career plans that have been envisaged by the by the Institute for the research management fellow. So overall, we advise that institutions and nominees write proposals in consultation with each other to put in a complete fellowship application. Next slide, please. This map here provides an overview of the research management fellowships funded by us in the past. It indicates the institutions and their locations funded in 2019 and 2020. So six awards have been awarded in 2019 for the research management fellows and four awards in 2020. And to especially note today, we will also be having a 2019 research management fellow, Dr. Aradita Baral from uh, Indian Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology to share her journey as an RM fellow. So with this, I will hand over to uh, my colleague, Dr. Sabuch, who to take us over the provisions of the research management grants. Over to you, Sabuch. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, as my colleague Ramya has highlighted some features of the fellowship, now in few next few slides, I will talk about two grant schemes. The first one is INMI Research Management Grant. The purpose of the grant is to support the expansion of the existing services via a research office at an institute or a university. And they can be used, these grant can be used for new national resources, for uh, funding learning visits, exchange visits, as well as networking events. Next, please. The provision is 10 lakh rupees for a year period and uh, research managers who can be hired through this particular fund can also be part of the now very fastly growing uh, IRMI community. As I mentioned, the duration is one year. Next, please. The roles in the applications are primarily threefold. First is the sponsor, as mentioned previously. A sponsor is a person who has a signatory authority in an institute or a university. They can be typically a dean, chair of a department, or a director, or the research dean. And the applicant or applicant, sometimes you can have two applicants who a second applicant considered as co-applicants, as well as others who could be collaborators whose expertise or the background could be beneficial uh, to the fulfillment of the objectives of the proposed grant. Next, please. It is expected that the institution who is applying for a uh, grant, a research management grant, already have a pre-existing research management structure. They are expected to have minimum office expenses, extended help to, and resources towards the research office, helping the integration with existing administrative structure, which incorporates networking between multiple departments, and also form a steering committee incorporating in-house which is within the institute as well as outside of the institute experts to monitor the progress of the research grant during the tenure of the grant in 2019 we have awarded four uh, uh, such applications and 2020 four awards next please the application deadlines is 30th of november this year and as mentioned before the eligibility uh, for this particular grant is not for profit institutions or universities who is primarily working towards biomedical science research. Next, please. Now, looking at the application uh, of the risk, uh, research management grant, the primarily we seek in the application the background information. What is the status of the research at the institute? status of the research management till date at the institute and also IRMI institutional research management form is a mandatory requirement for this particular application. We also look for the vision of the research office where uh, the applicant uh, is expected to indicate some gaps in the current services as well as propose some solution to address those gaps. Next please. 
uh, implementation plan is also very important part of the application where applicant is expected to explain uh, steps toward the implementation, including a very detailed management plan, budget detail with justifications, as well as milestone across during different phases, phases of this particular proposed grant in a one year duration. Next, please. One another aspect of the application, which, which generally the selection committee put a lot of emphasis is the sustainability plan and primarily the developed resource, which generally is proposed during this grant and how this resource will be utilized beyond the grant period and how this RM or research management staff will be engaged in the institute beyond the grant period. Other resources which are available towards the project to ensure that all the objectives proposed by the applicant or the institute will be met during the project duration. Next, please. The selection criteria is primarily focused on five different components. First is the effectiveness of the activity. Second, how the existing research support be augmented. Third is the integration with the border, a broader Indian research management ecosystem and research ecosystem and import and applicability and the importance of the management plan and future sustainability plan next please and one important thing to note because we are in the third round so anybody who has already been hosted uh, by institute for a rm fellowship they can apply for a research management grant only on their third year of the fellowship next please this is the map of the institution uh, which indicates the location of the INBI research management grants which uh, can be found uh, also in India Alliance website the detailed description of our fellows as well as their projects. Next please. The next category of the grant is IRMI travel grants. Initially it has been conceptualized to facilitate the participation of Indian research managers to the INOMS conference in Hiroshima. Seven awards were given in round one and second and two awards were given in round two. More detailed uh, information about the participation of Indian delegation to uh, INOMS Hiroshima can also be found in India Alliance website. Next, please. The whole idea of the travel grant came uh, from the fact that India research management is a new uh, a field of uh, career in India. So there all the research manager will be needing much more opportunities uh, for the interacting with each other's make, be, make uh, networks as well as learning from each other's experience. So there are some other leading international organization such as NQRA, Sarima or Yarma. So they uh, regularly conduct conferences uh, under their patronage. But there are some other conferences such as Vikra, which is uh, the virtual international convention for research administrators, uh, uh, which is uh, this particular conference is going to happen in March 2022. So these are some of the prospective areas where an applicant can look at to find out what kind of networking and conference opportunities is available for Indian research managers. Here, I'd like to mention considering the fact that we are in the mid of pandemic. So therefore, uh, one person can apply or applicant can apply for the travel grant, both in person as well as online workshop. And it is better uh, or it is advisable for the, all the applicants, they should check their eligibility um, by contacting the conference organizer well before the time. Next, please. So the travel grants, the purpose as stated before, to support the cost of attending conference or workshop in the area of research management. The eligibility is the person have to be located and working in an Indian research institution and working in the research management, at least have three years of experience and the um, applicant or the fellows who already have INOMS 2020 awards, they are not eligible to apply to this round. Next, please. The provision is up to 3 lakh rupees, which is meant to cover 
uh, various costs related to participation, incorporating, travel costs, visa cost, accommodation, meeting registration cost, and any other miscellaneous cost. And India Alliance will consider requests to support attending virtual conferences, workshops, and courses also in research management, as stated before. Next, please. The institute is expected uh, to complete the IRMI institutional registration form institution is also expected to nominate the applicant and advance the amount of money to facilitate the applicant's per, uh, participation in the conference and also provide the letter of support uh, which could be attached along with the application next please the selection uh, is primarily assessed based on three three criteria contribution of the research managers or the applicant uh, to the experience to the professional developmental goals, contribution of the experience to the applicant's current work in Indian research management ecosystem, and effectiveness of the measure for the sharing knowledge gain through those uh, conference or workshop to the applicant's organization as well as beyond uh, of the organization, that is the larger research management ecosystem. Next, please. So again, the application deadline is 30th of November and all the institute, institute which holds not-for-profit uh, status are eligible to apply and they should be also working in biomedical research because that is the remit of India Alliance. Next, please. So to apply for any research management fellowship and grants, we would invite all the prospective applicants to visit India Alliance website. You can check the eligibility. Application forms can be downloaded from the IRMI webpage in the India Alliance website. And you can send or the completed application form along with all the requisite information letters to the IRMI at the rate of IndiaAlliance.org by the deadline. Next, please. As mentioned before, all the fellowships grants are at present open and active and the deadline for all the fellowship and grant is 30th november 2021 now i would invite dr savita Ayer to take over thank you thank you very much sabuj next slide please so i'd just like to spend some time talking about the ermi institutional registration this is mandatory for all grant applications to these three schemes. And the institutional registration form is available on the ERMI webpage. If you look under the tab, join the ERMI network, you'll find the registration form over there. And uh, these forms and the data in the forms help us gather information about the institutions who are engaging with the ERMI initiative. So this is an important part of your ERMI application. So institutions that want to submit applications to any of these three schemes should complete this registration form as well. Next slide, please. Um, so now I move on to talking a little bit about our efforts with building a community of practice for research management in India. So ERMI is being developed through these two parallel strands of work. On the one hand are the three ERMI flagship funding opportunities, as you've just heard, the RM fellowships, RM grants, and the travel grants. And we are also uh, doing a whole host of activities which are designed to build our research management community in India. Next slide, please. So first things first, I'd just like to draw your attention to the fact that there is a growing ERMI network. You can join this network, uh, especially if you're a research manager, if you're in a research support role, please do join the network. Again, you can access the registration form. It's called the individual registration form. That's available off the ERMI webpage under the join uh, the ERMI network category, the tab. We also have a LinkedIn page for the ERMI network, so you can join us over there as well. If you complete the, uh, the individual registration form, uh, that puts your email address on our mailing list and helps us get in touch with you with any kind of opportunities as they arrive. So please do join the ERMI network if you're a research manager in India. Next slide, please. And now I'd like to draw your attention to a whole bunch of resources that we've been creating through the ERMI initiative because we realized that research management is still at an early stage in India. And uh, you know, as part of our commitment 
to uh, you know spreading raising awareness about research management we put all of these resources together so let's just look at some of these resources on the ermi page under the jobs and resources tab you can actually access a whole series of blogs which have been written by members of the ermi community on their experiences uh, in research management there are also blogs which have been written for example on india's participation at inoms 2018 and at inoms 2021 so there are a whole bunch of really useful articles about research management which you can find under the blog section next slide please and again under jobs and resources if you scroll down there are a whole bunch of video resources so through last year we ran a whole series of webinars the ERMI 2020 webinar series, and you can actually find links to the video recordings of these webinars through the India Alliance YouTube channel. And uh, we also hosted the ERMI annual conference for 2021 earlier this year, and the entire video recorded set can be accessed through the India Alliance YouTube channel. And links to all of these video resources are available through the Jobs and Resources tab of the ERMI webpage. Next slide, please. This is something we've been building up, which is a job portal, because uh, you know we'd like this to become a space where institutions who are creating research management roles can share their job descriptions with us, and we'll be happy to um, add you know brief details about those job descriptions on the job portal. We request uh, you know people who are sending in the job descriptions to ensure that there is an institutional page with the role description because then it helps us point uh, towards that uh, direction through the ERMI jobs portal. Next slide, please. And uh, there's a separate events tab. So if you keep an eye on the events tab, we'll keep updating it with all forthcoming national and international events that are relevant to research management. And one point I'd like to add is that if there is an event or a job uh, which you would like to tell us about, which you'd like to share with the ERMI community, please do drop in a message to ermi at indialliance.org and we'll be happy to share that further with the ERMI network. And, and that's one of the ways in which, you know, we'll continue building our community in India. Next slide, please. So I mentioned that we had a wonderful webinar series last year, 2020, and uh, very happy to announce that we are soon setting off with a whole new series of webinars, workshops, and informal discussions through this year and through some of the months, uh, early part of next year. So the first webinar in this series is going to be held on 8th October, and it's about capacity building within grants offices at universities and research institutions. And we have three European research manager colleagues who are going to come by and share their uh, expertise, their experiences, not just building uh, a specific function within a research office, but actually restructuring it, ensuring it that it's fit for purpose. And we hope that you'll find this webinar interesting as uh, you're developing research office support within your own institution. So do join us. The registration links are there on the India Alliance website. Next slide, please. I'm very happy to announce that we will be hosting the second edition of the ERMI Annual Conference that will be held in 2022. It's expected in October 2022. And uh, we have a new conference planning committee in place for the conference. And we are just starting to work uh, on deciding the themes for the conference. So please stay posted and we will, we will be sharing more information about the conference later on in the year. Next slide, please. So for more information, you can always uh, reach out to the ERMI team through at uh, ermi at indialliance.org. You'll find information on the ERMI webpage and uh, the conference website will eventually be updated with details for the 2022 conference. So thank you for your attention. And uh, on that note, I now uh, it's it's a real pleasure to invite uh, two of our ERMI awardees. They're here with us to join their experience, uh, to share their experiences. So I'd first like to invite Dr. Aradhita Baral. She's a research management fellow at IGIB in Delhi. 
Aradhita is here to tell us about her journey in research management and her journey as a research management fellow. Aradhita, uh, be lovely to see you. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I think it's a pleasure to be here today as, uh, you know, I still recall that day that uh, I was on the other side waiting eagerly to learn more about the Army Initiative and how it's going to be, uh, what it has to offer. It really takes me back to those days. And, uh, sorry to yes. interrupt, could you turn on your webcam, please? Oh, I did. Um... That's fine. Yeah. Is that okay now? Over to you. Yes. All right. Uh, so as I said, it's a pleasure to be here today, you know, I, going back to those days when uh, I was on the other side waiting for it. Anyways, without uh, taking more time. Uh, so uh, can I have the next slide, please? To begin with, who am I? Uh, I am Aradhita Baral currently working as a, a DBT Welcome Trust uh, Research Management Fellow. Uh, to introduce myself, I'd like to say that uh, I am a researcher who is passionate about enabling research. I began my journey as a Diamond Jubilee research intern and was involved in the Indian Genome Variation Consortium project. This encompassed six labs from CSIR, a couple of academic institutions, and collaborated with industry and international partners. Thereafter, I went ahead to do a PhD in DNA structures, more specifically DNA structural motifs called G quadruplex motifs involved in genome regulation. During both these tenures, I was involved in many multi-institutional uh, interdisciplinary collaborative studies involving different types of partnerships and stakeholders. I was not working only with the research community. I noticed that apart from the scientists, there were a lot of people who directly or indirectly facilitated our work. Can I have the next slide, please? These were like the nuts, bolts, screws, and brakes of the institutional caravan. I realized uh, that a successful research endeavor requires a sound support system. So the scientists and science managers or facilitators are equal stakeholders in the institutional success. But there was something more that could be done. There was more opportunity. What we needed was trained facilitators, one who had the concepts of research as well as the understanding of implementation ecosystem. And thus came the next step of my career. Uh, next slide, please. Where I joined as a project coordinator in a consultant role at the Department of Biotechnology. Though research manager is a single term, yes, its scope is expansive and it is multifaceted. I will describe some of the facets that I have experienced during my journey. Uh, one more click, please. So the first step where I was in the Department of Biotechnology, one of the facets that I was, was a, that of a resource person. I collected background areas, background information on the areas where DBT undertakes mission programs. At that point of time, for example, there was an antimicrobial resistance program uh, going on. So I did all the literature search, reading up all the research articles that were available, making reports for the officials, designing presentations for the overview, uh, looking for ongoing initiatives in both developing and developed countries and how it is being tackled and implemented. All this kind of information helped the policymakers and facilitated in decision making. Such kind of uh, resource generation was done for you know, diseases like influenza, respiratory syncytial virus, dengue, chikungunya, just to mention a few, that's not an exhaustive list in any case. Uh, the second uh, facet that I was, was that of an idea developer. Though I was not the one actually developing the ideas, but aided in it, another facilitation. Talking to experts, researchers, listening to brainstorming sessions, querying myself at each step about the pros and cons of each idea, 
and finally sharing the overview with the relevant officials. For example, I recall there was a two-day placental research conference where we had national and international partners, people from uh, who were ranging from physicians to researchers to policymakers. You know, in such kind of interactions, you try to get filter the crux of it and then you discuss and then that helps in further deliberation within the division and the department. And of course, the third facet being a nodal grant making institution was that of a grant manager. It included designing calls, advertising calls, um, screening them and uh, calling the expert committee meeting to uh, for project screening, then communicating those decisions, getting the requisites, and finally arranging to have the grants uh, administered. This takes me to the next phase of my um, career, which was that of a conference coordinator. Now you might be wondering, how can a conference coordinator facilitate research and how many facets can it have? But of course it has. This was, an, uh, this was a biotech company based in Oxford where I was working and they had this annual uh, event every year and the theme of each year changed. So for each year you had to identify stakeholders who were corresponding to that theme. Stakeholders who would enable the research, who would undertake the research, who would fund the research, who would build the network for the research. And thereafter, to, in, to make all this happen, you needed to procure funding. So there was a business development unit. You had that face it too, where you interacted with the private and the government uh, partners and you tried to get funds both for the research as well as for the conference. And finally, to get the word out and reach out to a wider audience, what else rather than the uh, social uh, media was a was the platform. And so I was a part of the that team too, where we had you know regular tweets and advertisement and calls for such kind of thing to this. The next phase and the current phase that I am in is actually one more click, please. The research manager as the Army Fellow at Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology. If you could go to the next slide, please. The mandate of the Institute is to translate concepts developed in basic biological research to commercially viable technologies for healthcare. There you have the research in the center and you have all the divisions that support it. You have the project man monitoring and evaluation division that takes care of your post grant management and any other ethical or implementation things that's required with research. The finance which takes care of the financial part of the project, your uh, UCs and your statement of expenditures and such kind of thing. The administration that enables by compliance with administrative guidelines, the nodal office, the director's office, and of course the new research management unit. One more click please. If you see there, all, on a single day, all these divisions are interacting among themselves to form a mesh to get the research running. Now the research management unit was a relatively new concept in the institute and had to be defined how to carry on this unit, what to, what to mandate it. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, please. Currently, the, uh, man, the institute's theme was project centric. Like each um, PI had their own projects, they applied for grants on their own. They had their own collaborators, they had their own requisites to be approached for that, ethical clearances and that kind of a thing. But more with the more uh, international fundings coming in and more partners being associated with IGIB, you needed to have a common theme of an institutional centric approach so that you know the people try to understand, yes, this is IGIB, this is how research is carried on in IGIB, this is how research is implemented in IGIB, and this is how collaborations are made in IGIB, one theme. So with that theme, the research management office was taken on. Next slide, please. The mandate of the research ma uh, management unit was made to be the international grants, the non-canonical grants, the international collaborations, and any other non-canonical type of collaborations. I am attached to the director's office and my portfolio involves building on uh, international collaborations like facilitating a steady flow of communication between the collaborators to ensure progressive research outcomes. This also includes co-application of grants, regular deliberations on prospective areas for co-partnering, ensuring compliance and budgeting, 
By saying uh, unusual or non-canonical grants, I mean developing a portfolio of grant applications in IGIB from the routine government grants that we take. It may include international funding, industry funding, philanthropic funding, and with the trend where more alliance projects are being funded, it becomes crucial to keep all the stakeholders engaged. Now, these are just four parts of the mandate, but actually the work that is done is vast. If you could have one more click, please. So this is all the activities that we do, and it is not limited to this. For example, we look for the fund proposals, then you align, work with the PI to align your proposals to the mandate of the court, collaborate, uh, coordinate with all the collaborators to get their inputs into uh, place before you know you submit the, your proposal. You make sure you, they have all their uh, requisite documents that are required. Then working on collaborative and grant agreements, I have to liaise with the CSIR being our you know grant body. Uh, main body since we are a, a institute under CSIR. So I have to have all the grants and agreements uh, concurred along with CSIR so that they have their approval on it, ensuring that the funder requirements for grant activation, both financial and administrative are met before thing. And the list continues. If you could go to the next slide, please. So if you see here, for any kind of project, the purple one is the research manager. I have these separate, separate many networks that I'm working. These include stakeholders both inside the institute and outside the institute. The research management unit is kind of an interface, one face for the institution, where your external stakeholders interact, where your internal stakeholders interact, and you know the requirements for from both the sides, and you communicate and try to get that sorted. That is how you facilitate in going forward. Now, before I you know, come to close the talk, I would like to, next slide, please, uh, talk a bit about, uh, talk a bit to the people who are planning to apply for this fellowship and what they should consider and what they should have in mind before applying for this. So the uh, uh, most important thing is like your choice of institute. The institute should not be a random choice. You should see what the theme of the institution is. The research management interest should align with your with the theme of the institution. Your expertise should align with it. Your ideas should align with it. Quite a lot of things are you can take from the internet. Otherwise, you can always approach the uh, office, the public uh, interacting office of any institute, and get an idea about their mandates and what they plan and how what is how is it that they work, so that you know you can align yourself in that way and see if this is actually what you would be able to do if this suits your expertise and then you choose for example in my case it was uh, igib being my uh, parental institute where i did my phd from but it was not a random choice i had other institutes in mind at the same moment which had you know grant offices and wanted to build capacity and all that but being but I knew IGIB, I knew its strength, I knew what its vision was, and thus I chose this. So it was a you know informed uh, choice. Like I did it because of this. And even when I after I joined uh, during the COVID times, I was initially a bit skeptical that how are things going to work out? It's COVID, there's a lockdown, and thus such kind of things. But I think the opportunity was well utilized. The amount of uh, uh, grant funding opportunities and collaboration opportunities that we were getting through due to this time was vast. And this, this um, enabled me to implement my vision. There was ample opportunity for grants, both international and national for the COVID projects. There were new ways of interaction, which was all digital. So basically you work with different time zones, but everything was digital. So it's more easy for you to cope up with and then the mode of communication and priority of initiative, taking initiatives was faster, the pace increased. This helped things to settle down. The second is conceptualizing how to implement the research management. You need to think over what is the potential of the research office that is already there and how can you augment it? How can you augment the capacity? How can you facilitate in what it is already doing? And how can you structure it in such a way that it becomes easier for the researcher and your external stakeholders to interact with? Uh, I 
I think the India, the Army Fellowship provides an ample amount of opportunity for your self uh, uh, capacity building too. Like there are mentorship sessions, which are one to one discussions wherein you can discuss anything that is of concern to you, be it your training, be it any uh, any of your doubts that you are uh, that you encounter while implementing what you wish to implement, be it getting access to some resource, be it getting connected to somebody, all such kind of things are talked through and considered through during your mentorship sessions. Then we have the webinar series, which are a very good way of seeing how things work elsewhere, not only in India, but also in international, uh, also internationally, what worked for them and how it worked for them. Then you have fellows meet where you get to interact with your peers and know how they are performing, what they are doing, your mutual interests and mutual problems and mutual successes. They pro provide support for conferences, as you have seen previously when um, uh, Dr. Savita was speaking. They provide networking opportunity and also opportunity for training. I'd like to end my uh, talk here. Thank you. My details are here if you want to connect. Thank you so much, Aradita, for taking us through your journey. Um, wish Thank you all you the so best much. going forward. On that note, Thank I'd you. like to invite Dr. Punari Gotipati. Uh, she is an RM Grant awardee, and she's also a Travel Grant awardee. So over to you, Punari. Please talk us through your journey. Thank you. Thank you, Savita. Am I audible? Okay, right. Yeah. Thank you, Savita. Um, and uh, if I can, if my slides can be put up. Uh, meanwhile, first things first, uh, thanks India Alliance for the Ermi initiative for, uh, you know, giving us a platform for research managers like us to network, learn and share from each uh, share with each other. Um, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Ponari Gotipati. I work as a consultant grants manager at LB Prasad I Institute. I have been awarded the um, Ermi institutional grant, the research management grant, and the travel award uh, in 2019 in the very first round of the grant call that came about. And over the next uh, a few minutes, I will talk to you about my experience of uh, how I came about with the idea uh, to apply for the grant and also what working on that project uh, has been like. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, before that, just uh, a very quickly a brief introduction to my uh, uh, my journey so far. Uh, I am a researcher trained research manager, similar to uh, the previous speaker. I did my PhD in molecular biology from University of Sheffield, after which I did a postdoc uh, from University of Oxford. And that's, uh, that's the time when I decided to return to India and also took a conscious decision to uh, step out of uh, academia and explore non-academic uh, science careers. Uh, I wanted to stay in science. Um, and then uh, an opportunity came about uh, for a research management role at India Alliance. Uh, I joined as a grants advisor uh, in 2011. I was then promoted to a grants manager, I've been with India Alliance uh, uh, for about four or five years. Uh, next slide, please. After which I took a short career break, during which time I was uh, volunteering in different uh, uh, projects associated with science education because that is another passion of mine. Um, so currently, after the career break, I now work as an independent consultant in research management, uh, uh, science education and outreach. Um, and one of the uh, jobs that I take up is a consultant uh, grants manager position at LB Prasada Institute since uh, 2019. Next slide, please. Um, and to those of you that are not familiar with the uh, LB Prasada Institute, uh, I would like to give a brief introduction so that you know uh, the idea for the grant uh, will become more uh, uh, more evident for you when I talk about that. Uh, so LB Prasad Eye Institute was uh, established in 1987 as a clinical facility and ophthalmology institution. Um, but now it has grown into uh, uh, a network of uh, different centers. There are currently, I think, 232 centers, actually. Um, and operations, it's a World Health Organization collaborating uh, center for prevention of blindness. And there are various operations uh, at the institution uh, in the field of eye health. 
Our research is central to the operations at LV Prasad Eye Institute and the research fans uh, clinical uh, basic research, public health, uh, innovation, and product development. Um, like with uh, IGIB, like uh, what Aradita mentioned, even at LV Prasad Eye Institute previously, all the, uh, the research funding um, and research management happened at individual level. It was the main onus was on the PIs, and each project was being managed independently by the PI. Uh, and though research happens across various uh, 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 various campuses of the institution, um, it is uh, kind of quite fragmented in that the basic research management happened uh, with one group of people and then the clinical research management was happening separately and similarly public health grants were being managed separately and innovation and product development separately. So there were um, lots of different things that were happening um, at the institution. Next slide please. So when I was uh, hired in 2019, uh, my job was also to set up a central grants office at uh, LV Prasad um, and to streamline the existing grants processes at the institution. So the central grants office uh, would take care of both the pre-award and post-award post operations, uh, like horizon scanning for funding opportunities, helping researchers identify right funding, uh, grants writing, a bit of grants writing, uh, I should have actually put in grants development there, which is slightly different. Um, so my, my main job responsibility is to help researchers develop their grant proposals, uh, liaising with funding agencies and uh, application process and checks. Um, on the post-award front, uh, it is helping PIs manage their funds, um, you know, reports to the funding agencies, in, uh, very similar to what Aradita was mentioning in her institution, you know, uh, with help with international partnerships, collaboration agreements, liaising with, you know, different stakeholders. Um, uh, when it comes to regulatory affairs and patents, yes, the grants office plays a role, but that's not the main role. We are, we act more like a checkpoint, basically. So it is when um, I was trying to streamline the grants processes that I came up with this idea to set up an online grant management portal. And it is this idea that was funded by the ERMI Institutional Grant. Um, next slide, please. So, uh, so basically, I'll just uh, talk to you about how the idea came about and uh, you know, how I implemented, how I uh, approached uh, the, the grant process uh, and, and all the other things. Um, so uh, when I was trying to streamline the grant processes of the institution, when I first joined, uh, I spent the first couple of months trying to understand how things happen at the institution, uh, how things are currently run at the institution. And uh, um, also I spoke to all the different stakeholders, the PIs, the admin people, the finance to kind of try and understand, you know, where the issues were, what the main difficulties were and, you know, um, uh, and how to solve those. And um, very, very soon after I joined, it became very evident to me that not having a single centralized system for grants administration uh, was one of the reasons why we were facing the issues we were facing at the institution. Um, because as I mentioned, things were happening in a very fragmented manner and there was no streamlined information pipeline. So different people had different sets of information and there was uh, sometimes a lack of communication, sometimes miscommunication um, and things like that. And um, like with many other institutions in India, most of the things were being uh, processed manually, the reports and all the other things, which of course takes considerable time and effort, but there are also increased chances of discrepancies. And so I saw, I noticed that there was a lot of back and forth that was happening with the funding agencies when it came to the reports. Um, and um, you know, uh, adhering to their, uh, uh, com I mean, compliance basically. Um, so uh, it occurred to me that many of these issues can very easily be sorted if there is an online grants management system. Um, so when this uh, idea came to me, I then went and spoke to the PIs, uh, especially the most senior PIs from the institution, ran this idea with them and uh, kind of, uh, worked with them in coming out with a plan as to what the most important features of the system should be, what would be most helpful to the PIs and how to implement it and how to develop it. And once I had the plan ready, once I knew what I wanted to do, once I knew how I wanted to do it, um, and uh, so, and what value addition this would bring to the institution, how this is going to solve some of the problems that we were facing in the institution, I kind of put all of this together 
and then approach the higher authorities at the institution. And um, uh, I was very fortunate enough um, that they readily came on board and they were very encouraging of this idea and they gave me the go ahead. Um, I think one of the reasons why uh, this happened was because I had already planned everything, you know, everything was already in place. I knew exactly what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do and why this needs to be done at the institution. So it was very easy to convince the, uh, the management. And also because the um, institutional uh, uh, management uh, is very forward looking and they already have experience of uh, having worked on an electronic uh, uh, re medical record system, uh, which is an in-house system that was developed at Elvi Prasada Institute for the clinical facilities. And so I think they already saw uh, how an online system brings in more efficiency and more transparency. Uh, so that was another reason I think why um, uh, uh, you know why the idea was uh, uh, encouraged uh, very readily by the institution. Um, so this 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 was exactly the moment when the ERMI. So we anyway were going to develop the portal with the institutional funds, and then the ERMI grant call came out, uh, which was the right you know right time uh, right moment for us. And because I already knew what I wanted to do, I already had the institutional support. I went and applied for the grant. Um, next slide, please. So uh, one of the things that I would like to uh, tell all the prospective applicants here is that uh, you know when you're thinking of applying to this grant, I uh, you should not be doing things as an afterthought. I think like with any other project, like with any other grant application, it is very important that you already think of all the specific things that you need to put in the proposal uh, well ahead of time. Give it time, think about it, run it by different people, take their feedback, and uh, you know put in a strong proposal. Um, every aspect, like identify a lacune in your institution or in the general research uh, ecosystem in the country come up with a solution and uh, a plan to implement it as well as uh, you know what the outcomes need to be already think about the outcomes and uh, have the budget in mind and justify the budget and everything because at the end of the day as applicants it is the onus is on us to convince the committee that what you're proposing will bring value addition to, not just to your institution but also to the research management ecosystem in the country so this, the selection criteria that was presented um, uh, by Sabuj, um, I think it's very important that you go through all of those things, think about each of those aspects and uh, write in your grant application how the solution that you are proposing will meet all of these different criteria that India Alliance has in mind, uh, which is exactly what has happened in, in, in my case, um, that when the call came out, when I read it, I kind of saw how what India Alliance was looking for in, 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 uh, in these grant applications and the idea that I had, uh, you know, how well it would fit. And that is when I went ahead and uh, applied to this grant. Um, and, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a brilliant opportunity for, uh, for all research managers in the country, respective of, you know, which stage, whether, whether you are fresh in the institution, whether you already have some experience in the institution to take advantage of these grants because you know, as we know, there are we are all taking baby steps here, and we are all just trying to build things in our institutions. And um, I think uh, very few institutions actually have these research management facilities, right? So this is um, so it's not really on the priority list of the institutions. So to then go and ask for funds to do this or to do that will become difficult because it's not on the priority list. So now you have an opportunity to, you know, to apply for this extramural funding to implement your idea and to show to the institution, to prove to the institution, uh, you know, uh, the value that such solutions and services can bring to the organization. So you kind of, you know, have an opportunity to actually uh, help put research management on the priority list of the institution through these grants, and uh, which I think is a is a very brilliant, it's a excellent opportunity something that you know uh, that was not there before so uh, i think everyone should take advantage of um, and exactly that happened even in my case because even though the institution agreed for the portal to be built um, i because it, i was very fresh there it was only six months since i joined so i was uh, not very ambitious with my plan initially at all because i didn't want the institution to spend too much money on this so i just wanted to bring a, build a repository really early 
but it is because i had the ermi grant that i was able to uh, add a lot more lot many more features uh, to the grant um, sorry to the to the portal and make it a much more robust uh, uh, um, robust portal with so many additional features that is um, uh, not only advantages to the institution lv prasad but possibly to other institutions uh, also um, so i think that is why i think it is important uh, to 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 put it take advantage of these opportunities and uh, also you know the feedback that you get from the committee uh, is also very very good for example in my case the committee categorically uh, in mentioned that i need to that i should actually discuss this with other research managers at other institutions and which is exactly what i did after i received that comment from the committee i spoke to many different research managers took their inputs and now i think i have a much more improved product in hand um uh, yeah next slide please so i think that is why uh, uh, so it's just i'm just presenting to you an example of how uh, you know how uh, the grant actually helped me in building a uh, uh, building a much better product than what i initially uh, in, uh, had in mind uh, and how it helped me to do this and of course with any other, like with any other india alliance funding the flexibility that came with the grant also was hugely helpful because you know with the pandemic i had to kind of you know change plans and do things a little differently but because india alliance allowed me that flexibility again you know i was able to implement the project uh, on time and uh, you know the 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 the, the portal is uh, now ready uh, and launched so just just a glimpse of uh, what i built uh, but that's uh, just just to show you what it looks like um next slide please so finally i'll just take a minute or so to also talk about the travel grant that uh, that i received um, uh, in 2019 again and uh, uh, so i just want to mention here that you know as a research manager at an institution i was you know this is something that i always say that i was working in silos and you know i it kind of sometimes feels very lonely and i did not even know the existence of you know all of these research management societies uh, across the globe before ermi actually introduced this to us um so when i read about this travel grant it was very exciting uh, that there was something like this that there was a world congress of research managers and that which is attended by so many people from uh, all across the globe so it was an exciting opportunity opportunity that i really wanted to uh, take on um especially because i was new in an institutional role and uh, you know and so uh, i was very hopeful that this conference there were so many learnings uh, there will be so many learnings from this conference that would help me do my job better at the institution and also help me in my career development um so unfortunately the uh, you know the conference uh, uh, happened online finally in 2021 so i did miss out on you know some of the networking uh, aspects of it but it was nonetheless uh, uh, a very exciting uh, experience um, just to see the wide spectrum of research management roles that exist across the country how evolved some of these systems are and i think attending such meetings and conferences is again um, we help you a lot in doing your role um because you know when if you take the example of the portal that i was trying to build for example i mean this is certainly not a novel idea this is not the first institution or the first time that someone was building a grants management system um many institutions in us you know all of them almost uh, have these things so learning how people do these things in other places helps us so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel we could build on their experience and then you know improvise things at our front um so i think especially for indian res uh, research managers um, uh, uh, this is a good opportunity i certainly benefited from it so i would encourage uh, all of you thinking about these two opportunities to just go for it um do apply and uh, all the very best thank you thank you so much pranari that was fascinating really nice hearing uh, about your journey um so on that note could i just request all the panelists to turn on their uh, cameras please so punari and aradhita a huge thanks to you both for joining us here so back to our audience i think what i just like to emphasize is that through this suite of three different funding opportunities what the ermi initiative is trying to do is to support both institutions and individuals 
So as you would have heard from Aradita and Punari and seen through their journeys, what they're doing at IGIB and at LV Prasad is really a collaboration between them as research managers and their host institutions. So certainly the emphasis is on the research management and as such, the India Alliance does not uh, have any particular rules about who the staff should be who work on these research management projects. And I'd just like to mention that because we have a couple of questions in the inbox which relate to that question. So there's, there's a question about uh, whether there's an age limit. So Ramya, would you take that question, please? Thank you, Savita. Yeah, so as, as you have reiterated, I just would like to tell that uh, we do not have an age restriction. Uh, so if in terms of the research management fellowship, we always look that uh, they have to be a relatively new entrant into the research office processes. That's the only eligibility that we look for. And if they're going to apply for the research management grant or for the travel grant, for the travel grant, it is only for the eligibility that they have to be in the research management for at least three to four years. So there also there is no age restriction. And that same applies for the research management grant. Thank you, Ramesh. There is, there is another uh, question. Um, so does the ERMI grant support bioincubator managers with some uh, with sound background experience in biomedical research? So uh, again, I think the answer is really to consider which of these three funding schemes uh, you would like to apply to. What is the overall remit of the funding schemes and uh, whether as an individual research manager, you're the right fit to those funding schemes, but working in collaboration with your institution, right? So, um, Sabaj, we have a couple of questions about the travel grants look like. Um, so we have a colleague who's joined us today who has a total of 10 years of professional experience, but uh, she thinks that she might have two years of research management experience. Can she still apply for a travel grant? Yes, I thank you, Savita, for the question. So I believe they should apply. The applicant uh, to highlight if there is any career breaks uh which probably hampers it can be any reason uh, probably not allowing the person to hold their full-time positions uh so they should apply even though it might be a few months here and there so that should not harm them or make them disqualified uh, committee actually look into various aspects of it one of the aspect is the experience other aspect is the suitability of that particular conference for the research management so there are multiple things one have to remember that it have to be on the research management field and your background uh, should be from the research management. Even you might have probably little two or three months less or some little less time. So you can highlight those. Should not so maybe deter work. you. Yeah. Deter, yeah. Should so not deter you. Sorry. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so there's another question. Uh, are individuals already appointed at research institutions eligible to apply for the RM Fellowship? Well, the answer is yes, but uh, I think what Ramya has already just reiterated is that we'd expect the RM Fellows to have not spent too much time at that institution. We expect them to be relatively new entrants, at least at that institution. So uh, I think there's a judgment to be made over there but certainly i mean this it would not be in the spirit of the scheme for somebody who's been there at the institution for 10 years to be putting in an application for the rm fellowship scheme right um, we have a question from the thapur institute of engineering and technology so could i request you to take that actually so i think it's a question about eligibility of yeah. uh, an institute to apply. So I know the India Alliance has specific criteria for institutions to apply. And their second question is about the method of applying. So the ERMI grants uh, are currently not on the ISS system. So could you just talk about the application yeah. process? Yeah. Sure. So the first thing is for the not-for-profit status. So not-for-profit status has been evaluated based on multiple criteria. I believe Thapar Institute is a deemed university, so ideal should not be a problem, but there is not a single criteria which has been used by India Alliance to assess the not-for-profit status. I'll encourage the Thapar Institute officials to go to the India Alliance website and to look at what are the criteria which India Alliance used to assess the 
not-for-profit status. It incorporates several aspects. For example, availability of a annual uh, report, availability of audited uh, financial statement, and up-to-date statements. These are some examples, but not these are not only some of the criteria. So those things probably they can look at. If they have any further question, they can always write to us in irmi at the rate, uh, at the rate of indialliance.org and we can get back to them. That is the first part of the answer. Second part uh, is regarding the how to apply. So obviously it is not through ISAs as uh, Ramya and also I mentioned in the in between of my presentation that you can go to the India Alliance website and then you can look for research management grant or the travel grant, whatever you want to apply. There will be a, hy a hyperlinked uh, section called form download the form in a word document attach all the information needed and send us as an email attachment preferably in a pdf form thank you so much uh, ramya i think we have a question about the rm fellowships if an institution is currently hosting an rm fellow will that limit another research manager at the same institution from applying for the fellowship Thank you, Savita. That's a great question. So as per our mandate, uh, research management fellows who are currently availing the fellowship can apply only in the third year of their fellowship. This also applies to the institute who are hosting the research management fellowship. So they can also apply only in the third year of the research management fellowship program. Thank you. Just wondering. Can one organization apply for all the three types of grant support? <laughs> Ramya and Sabwit, what do you have to say about that? Uh, yeah, so actually it's good to be ambitious, but then each of these bandits are very different. So if you apply for a grant and if you want to apply for a fellowships, inherently there is a problem because fellowships are meant for the organization which is relatively new. Whereas the grants are for the organization which having a established, well established office. So even though you want to apply for three of them together, but then inherently there is a problem because the idea of how much experience the research management office already holds varies across, the requirement varies across these three categories. Yes. So ideally, probably you can't. If I may add, you may not apply yes. on the same round. You can same apply round. in a subsequent round. Yes. Thank you, Ramya. Thank you so much. Um, Ponari Radhita, I think there's a question here. If participant speakers would be interested in sharing LinkedIn information for more information and networking, you are both already on LinkedIn, isn't it? Yes. Would you just like to respond to that? Uh, yes, uh, I think I put that in my last slide. Uh, my, you just type in my name. There are very few people with my name, actually, so you should be Find me. Yeah, so here, I think search by the name, it should be available. So they're both on LinkedIn and Twitter. I think we have yet another question about individuals uh, being able to apply to both RM grants and RM fellowships at the same time. I think we've already covered that not in the same round, because the purpose of those two grant schemes is very different. I think we're running out of time. So if there are any further questions from the participants, please drop in your queries to the ERMI mailbox at ermi at indialliance.org. And a huge thanks to all our panelists today. Uh, it's a pleasure to see all of you here today. And audience, thank you so much for joining us. Bye for now. Thank you.